Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, by the Lord God Most High, above all women on the earth, for he has so exalted your name that your praise shall be undying on our lips. Good afternoon, everyone. We celebrate the Eucharist today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd of Philippians joined in and showed its hostility to Paul and Silas. So the magistrate had them stripped and ordered them to be flogged. They were given many lashes and then thrown into prison and the jailer was told to keep a close watch on them. So, following his instructions, he threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Late that night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing God's praises while the other prisoners listened. Suddenly, there was an earthquake that shook the prison at its foundations. All the doors flew open and the chains fell from all the prisoners. When the jailers woke and saw the doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to commit suicide. Presuming that the prisoners had escaped, but Paul shouted at the top of his voice, Don't do yourself any harm. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, then rushed in, threw himself, trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas, and escorted them out, saying, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They told him, become a believer in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your household too. Then they preached the word of the Lord to him and to all his family. Late at his words, he took them to wash their wounds, and was baptized then and there with all his household. Afterwards, he took them home and gave them a meal. And the whole family celebrated their conversion to believe in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our responsorial psalm is Alleluia. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore you before your holy temple. Alleluia. I thank you for your faithfulness and love. 
which excel all my avenue of you. On the day I called, you answered, you increased the strength of my soul. Alleluia. You stretch out your hands and save me. Your hands will do all things for me. Your love, O oh Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Alleluia. Let us turn now to praise the gospel. Alleluia. Christ has risen and shone upon us, whom he redeemed with his blood. Alleluia. 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 My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me. Not one of you has asked, Where are you going? Yet you are sad at heart because I have told you this. Still, I must tell you the truth. It is for your own good that I am going, because unless I go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will show the world how wrong it was about sin, and about who was in the right, and about judgment about sin, proved by their refusal to believe in me, about who was in the right, proved by my going to the Father, and you're seeing me no more about judgment, proved by the prince of this world being already condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. Please. The Gospel we have this afternoon is a continuation of the And he's saying this to us, reminding us first and foremost of the importance of him ascending to the Father in the heavens, which in a few days we will be celebrating Ascension Sunday or Ascension Day, wherein we recall when the Lord Jesus lifted himself up in his own power to be with the Father and now is watching at us from the heavens. And secondly, a reminder for us to about the Holy Spirit. In the next few days as well, we'll be hearing more about the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. The gospel yesterday and this past Sunday talks about the Holy Spirit of truth who will remind us of everything that the Lord Jesus had told us. Yet it is important as well that we listen to the Holy Spirit, to his inspirations. It is vital that we ourselves learn how to be sensitive to the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And how does that happen? When we do our best, first of all, to pray and be aware of how the Holy Spirit inspires us. By prayer, by being attuned always to God's Word, we allow the Holy Spirit to work and speak to us. And also needing a response from us as well, our response to the Holy Spirit should always be yes, to always follow His inspirations. And the Our Lady is the one who is the model of saying yes to the Holy Spirit. When the angel appeared to her, at the Annunciation, informing her that she will be the mother of the Messiah, she actually said yes, and then she, Jesus came to us and became our Savior. So a reminder for us today, especially in these days leading up to Pentecost, to remember first of all of the work of the Holy Spirit, that we ourselves should be aware, should be always ready to listen and follow His inspirations. So we may want to ask ourselves throughout this liturgy and later on, what is it that is 
that blocks us from following the inspirations of the Holy Spirit? Is there something in us that's a hindrance in really giving ourselves, opening ourselves to the working of the Spirit of God? Maybe it's time that we surrender it to the Lord, surrender it to Him, and allow Him to work in our lives so we could know the truth that we are God's children, we have a Father in heaven and a Mother in heaven too, and that one day the Father in heaven would like us to be with Him forever as we continue to work and cooperate with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and let us just bring to the Lord our needs and intentions. We pray for the Holy Father, all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that they may be continually instruments of God's working and salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials that they may work and enact laws that brings justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and those who are suffering at this time, that the Lord Jesus, through the intercession of Our Lady, they may be comforted and granted healing, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And now we pray in silence for our own intentions. And asking the intercession of Our Lady, Saints Francisco and Jacinta Marto, we all together pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We bring all these petitions to you, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for true goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for true goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that this sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Most Holy Father, this offering of our humility, which we bring you with joy as we commemorate the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant, we pray, that it may be for us who are joined to the sacrifice of Christ, our consolation on earth and our eternal salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to the earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look at the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember Lord's future spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis Apo, Jose R. Bishop, and all the clergy. I remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, so we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lady of Fatima, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, are all the saints who have placed you through the ages, we are married to be coerced to tell up and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, 
have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon, Rejoice, O Virgin Mother, for Christ has risen from the tomb. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Renewed by this Paschal Sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that we who honor the memory of the mother of your Son may show forth in our mortal flesh the life of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing, which we also extend for those who may be joining us online at this time. May God, through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you always know and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and your loved ones and your families now and forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of thee. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ.